A movie making nerd by James Rolfe. So uh, I've been getting contacted by a lot of people uh, about like when are you going to do the book? 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 And it almost always comes with a uh, a secondary jokey comment of, or do you not have time? <laughs> and, yes. and I'd like to remind everybody that the original comments about no time from our perspective was imagine if YouTube was your full-time job, you could do all these things in your video production. Not that man is mistaken. Time is actually infinite. <laughs> <laughs> that was never uh, my position, but um, I do. I, I spent a lot of time working out and, you know, multitasking basically. And so if, if he had re- released the audiobook. That really, it probably, I probably would have listened to it by now um, on runs and stuff. But so far, he released a, an announcement video, a um, a Kindle version, which we'll talk about in a second, and then the the paperback. There is no hardcover version, which I was a little surprised about. The Kindle version, like everybody's saying that the formatting is like all kinds of broken, like there's no QA on this thing at all. Oh, interesting. And then, the, yeah, I don't know if you've seen any of the screenshots, but it, it, it shows like, um, I don't know, like weird ASCII characters, like all throughout it. And it's like sort of unreadable. Uh, yeah, I think it, yeah, it's, it's like all the letters are scrunched together. I think I've seen some screenshots. Um, I'm not sure why you didn't do the audiobook at the same time, but I'll say this. There's been a lot of laughing, laughing, joking, numbnuts <laughs> about, uh, about the Photoshoppy nature of this cover. And now that I, and I, I thought it was kind of like real Photoshoppy too. Now that I hold it in my hands, the, um, the conceit of the design is not that bad, but there's, there's something that sticks out like a sore thumb, <laughs> which is for some reason, there's some kind of digital, um, airbrushing going on, like hideous airbrushing <laughs> going on on each of the faces, except for his childhood face. Like you ever, you know, like a, like a Snapchat filter, basically. And one of them in particular is like him looking like he's Jamaican Mon. <laughs> There's one in particular where he, he, he looks, he looks, like, he looks like Patrick Stewart at the end of, uh, <laughs> of X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks like somebody like took an old man and baby faced him, but all of them are, have Snapchat baby face. Yeah, they all they all have something going on there. Yeah, it's like an illustration filter or something. The the logistics of getting this this hush puppy out is it I I think um well deserved as like a top 10 kind of like WTF James. <laughs> Why do you manage things the way you do kind of thing. So, from what I can tell, this was ultimately self-published. Now, he announced in 2019, I think it was. He was like the book is coming out. It's coming out this year. And then the following year, at, at December 2020, he was like, it's definitely coming out in 2021. The book has been the main focus of my efforts lately. It's an autobiography about my life, how I got started making movies, and all the challenges I faced. You want to see something crazy? I started writing it about... 16 or 17 years ago. So this is my old floppy disk collection with all my old scripts and writings and stuff. And this right here is uh, the oldest draft that I still have. Of course, it's been a work in progress. Since then, I've worked on it occasionally from time to time. And obviously, lots more stuff has happened, such as the nerd, the movie, and fatherhood. And that's all in the latest draft. I'm also trying to figure out how to publish my life story, a movie-making nerd, which... I intend to do as a printed book, a digital book, and an audio book. I've made progress since last time. The book is now formatted into a PDF with pictures and all that, which was a technical nightmare for me. I'd make one little change and then all the pictures are pushed onto the wrong pages and stuff gets all messy. It took several weeks, but it's basically done. Basically. Now, how to publish it? No idea. Not yet. Uh, but I'm going to get serious about this and I'm going to try to get it out this year. Uh, same update as last time. Nothing new. It's written. It's done. I just need to figure out how to release it um, because I've never done a book before. And for more stuff, I have a whole book written, which I hope comes out this year or maybe next year. We'll see. But the book is coming. But his excuse all along was like, I don't know how to publish a book. I don't know. I've never done it. So I don't really know like what I'm doing. I don't know how to make it happen. 
And I'm sitting behind the TV screen being like, self-publish, self-publish. You just go to lulu.com. <laughs> and, uh, and so published. <laughs> yeah, I heard the, that the slobs or somebody was shopping around the book to real publishers, right? And then... And this is the this is like getting to be classic with him, where it's like I got to shoot it in California, and it's got to be published by Penguin Putnam. I don't get it, I, and and the reason I have a little bit of a stake in this is because I too actually I self published a book myself at some point in my life, and it's uh, it's just a little bit shorter than James's. His I think comes in at like three hundred and forty pages. Mine's like three twenty. It was really fun actually. It you know you kind of do all the layout and PDFing on your own. You know, you do it in InDesign, basically. And then you just throw a PDF at them in color or black and white, you know, and then, like, you can set your own price. It's amazing. Like, the, they, you end up with this really cool... And then, yeah, like, they they give you an ISBN, so you can sell it on Amazon. They give you, um, you know, audible.com. You can publish uh, uh, your audiobook there. So I, I released everything all at once. Of course, I have no audience. Or I, I had even less of an audience at the time that I published this. But I... I I remember I I had written an essay about my third feature, and then when the fourth one came around, I was like, oh, I should do another one of those essays. That was kind of fun. And then it turned into a book, and I thought I was going to do kind of like James ultimately did here, which is I would just write it in Microsoft Word, get it printed by one of these self-publishers, and uh, and call it a day. But then our friend Emily came along and was like, you know, I'm a copy editor by trade. And not only did she do all the layout, so the photo layout and, um, and you know, the, 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 there's... Uh, like a sides and there's all kinds of nice stuff in here, but she also did all the copy editing and it turned like, I'm a halfway decent writer. She re, like, she found so much stuff <laughs> like, yeah. uh, that shows that I can't really write. Um, it seems like James needed a copy. <laughs> you really, uh, you know, I hate to say like, you really do. You really, you, you, you know, generally speaking. So like, even if you've had this thing sitting on your desk, if you're the only one looking at it, you won't see all the mistakes, you know, you just won't. Yeah, especially because if you're trying to just get everything down, if you're just trying to remember everything you want to say to the audience, um, you're going to get lost in the f phraseology. Uh, I remember color was it was a lot more expensive to get printed. Black and white, I think the minimum cost for my book at the length was like $12, and then I could mark it up. Um, the hardcover, I have a hardcover here of it that was in color. And that like so color hardcover came out to like 50 bucks, like for a book. So they, you know, they basically didn't sell. They're it's a vanity thing for you. But he sell he sold his uh, his paperback for twenty, you know, so for a new release or whatever. And I heard that it's doing really well on some site. It's like yeah. some, you know, because the truth is people don't really read, and, <laughs> and so yeah. he has an audience, and so you know they bought the book. So that's kind of cool. It's almost like maybe publishers were stupid for overlooking this. <laughs> and this is, I'm like, dude, like you have, you know, you already did all the hard work. Which was yeah. you built an audience. You mm -hmm. did the thing that the publisher is supposed to do for you. You that's that was always my one of my favorite things about the guy was, especially in the early days where I was like you're you're just skipping the whole bullshit and just yeah. going straight you know straight to consumer. So I'm like so whenever he doesn't just go straight to consumer, it kind of hurts my little heart. My little heart. <laughs> <laughs> but just so he did finally. He seems to have acquiesced. The slobs made it happen. God bless you, slobs. But I do think, you know, I think, I think getting the audiobook out at the same time would have been smart. Yeah. A lot of people, because there are visible errors throughout it, um, people are like, is he going to read all the errors aloud? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so people have been, you know, the, the Cinemassacre Truth, it's like a Christmas, it's like, it's like La Salette. It's oh, like yeah. a just wall to wall. You know, there was, I think my favorite one, somebody posted a meme of, of Shaquille O'Neal reading a book looking very cheeky. <laughs> and it said like truthers reading the new book. <laughs> like, the first, so his wife wrote the foreword. And so the very first word in the book is forward by April Rolf. And the word forward is spelled F-O-R-W-A-R-D. <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> Uh, oh, so the first no. word is misspelled, oh, but no. um, now I, I'll, I'll get through this, you know, sometime soon. Hopefully we got a lot going on with the holidays, but I have read the first chapter, the childhood chapter. And what James details here is that he had haunted, like he had like weird nightmares, like, like persistent, frightening imagery. Like he was like constantly haunted and, and he leads with the dragon. Um, 
you know, the hmm. dragon in my dreams. And he kind of describes it like he's fucking Batman. Like he, <laughs> he's like, so I looked up and there it was. And that's it. And that defined everything. I'm like, oh, I still don't really see the, the visual significance, like the, the thematic uh, uh, significance of the dragon personally. Then a dragon appeared and tried to eat me. I woke up crying and screaming into my pillow. My mom turned on the light and explained to me I was just having a nightmare. It was my first experience with the power of imagination. That's like, it, you know, that, that <laughs> Cinemassacre 300 drag, dragon video was, I think, supposed to mean something. And I still actually don't quite... The, he made Cinemassacre 200 where he detailed his his uh, all of his video workflows. I love that. All those retro workflows. Love that. Couldn't Can't watch that enough. But um, the, the dragon thing, I, I just... I understand there's supposed to be some poetry, some kind of uh, experimental film, some sort of allegory or something, but I'm like, I'm just not getting it. I think he likes the concept of an allegory. And so he went with this one. That's what I'm yeah. <laughs> one of the things that got a lot of attention on there was he had said in a video, it was like um, his top 20 favorite movies or something. He reviewed Cuckoo's Nest, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And he was like, as somebody who spent seven and a half years in a, in a special ed school, uh, I've really related to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And it was like a really offhand... It's like, I've watched the, oh, hundreds of hours of this man, and he drops that on us. <laughs> it reminds me of the friendship I had with a lot of my classmates at a special ed school where I spent seven and a half years as a kid. So there actually is a, a whole section here called special ed school, and he describes being... A, 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 he doesn't use the word, but neurodivergent... Uh, um, I, yeah. I, I, I think this, you know, decidedly autistic, um, you know, that yeah. he, uh, I, mean, uh, I don't want to diagnose the man, but like the story I've read the excerpt on the truthers posted that excerpt and it sounds like my nephew who's autistic, especially yeah. the younger days. And you never know. Cause everyone grows to, di especially with the spectrum of autism, you never know which direction you're going to go, how well you can. Right. live with it or and uh, you know everyone has their varying degrees but again not a doctor but that sounds like my nephew because it well because he had like sensory stuff yeah. like um he'd be like really afraid of a, like a balloon popping or um uh he, he he would rebel in ways where like like he would refuse to go to the bathroom wet his pants or mm. um he would have like like these kind of extended tantrums these kind of like completely out of control tantrums kind of say i don't know about um, if you've run in, into this yet, my kid, um, my kid, uh, it's, I've talked a little bit about her kindergarten experience. She's, they have like a feelings class now. I didn't have anything like that when oh, I was a yeah, kid. Oh yeah, definitely. I went to Catholic school. They had like anti-feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you can't have feelings. <laughs> They're not allowed that? here. Um, and it's actually, it's pretty good. I, I, you know, it, it nor normally like it, to me, it, it might reek of like, uh, you know, a, uh, like a, a mental health iguana or something, you know, like what, <laughs> whatever kind of new age stuff they're coming out with. But no, this is like, they have uh, colored zones. There's like the red zone, green zone, yellow zone, blue zone. And the whole idea is how out of control are you? What zone are you in? You know, are you, are you? Green, which means calm and ready to learn, or are you red, which is completely out of control? Are you blue, which means you're sick, tired, bored, or you know disengaged, or something like that? So they, it's just a way for children to to categorize, like where where are you at, and this is why you're not ready to like engage with the rest of us. Okay. Audience, are you blue right now? <laughs> are you disengaged? <laughs> are you bored? I'm in the fucking blue zone. <laughs> Talk are about you... <laughs> <laughs> Not your kid. I ain't come here for your kids or his kids. <laughs> I ain't come here for any kids. Um, yeah. So I think it's. Look, I'll, I'll say this: if 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 it's as severe as he made it sound, which it's like he was in and out of uh, all kinds of therapy over it, and then it, culminating in he went to a special ed school. And I bet at that time, you know, if it, we're talking about the eighties, right? Because he was born in nineteen eighty. In the eighties, nineties even was a little different. But so it's, they put him on Ritalin. And, you know, seven and a half years in special ed. And my guess is that it wasn't like the full spectrum of special education. My guess is that he was in class with kids that were like, had way bigger struggles than he did. Right. So because they just didn't have, they didn't have this gray area that they have now. I'll say this, man, for a guy who had those kinds of struggles. No, I mean. He did great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, holy shit. I mean, this is this is a testament to like if you can find something like creativity, art, 
expressing yourself, figuring out a way to, you know, and I, I think so far anyway, that, that could be the power of the book for somebody is like, oh, here's, you know, and look, like how much of your, of his audience do you suppose is, you know, near neurodivergent? I'd say pretty. Uh, I mean, I think we're both neurodivergent. So. <laughs> <laughs> look at us. Look we're at spending us. all this time on this. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But just to be like, well, maybe, you know, process your kind of obsessive tendencies or process, you know, through artwork. Like what better? You know, fuck. I mean, when you go to therapy, what do they, they tell you to journal, right? They tell you to tell stories, no, yeah. to, you know, so. and it's, it's, and it's a form of art. Yeah. So he found that. So I, I think that's cool. I think it's cool that he got this out. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing all about the, the, the movie. You know, the movie is one of his, the AVGN feature that is. It's one of the most... I think fascinating parts of his life because it was this giant undertaking, even with it being bad, it clearly was a giant undertaking, but it was so bad and it costs so much. There's a, like, there's like a cost question here of like, yeah. it, it, it ate a lot of time. It didn't give back the way it needed to give back. And I saw some excerpts that, that kind of um, indicated that where he was like, you know, basically I had to, to nerf my income on the channel in order to make the movie. And you know, obviously there's, theories about what he did with the Kickstarter, with the Indiegogo money or whatever. I don't think any of that's verified. And he does talk about it here a little bit. He's like, no way. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have to, uh, I have to read the book myself. I, I, I'm interested. It's a, it, I mean, you can't get any more fascinating than James Rolf, really. <laughs> I think so. He, he said, um, in his announcement video that he was really inspired by like rebel without a crew, the Robert Rodriguez mm. filmmaking book. Um, and you know, this is like, the, t talk about like converging, you know, uh, uh, interests. He talked about, uh, all I know about filmmaking. I learned from the toxic Avenger, this book, I've said it many times for me really was like, and guess what? James Gunn co-wrote this thing. Wow. Um, but this book, uh, I read it when I was 14 and it's, I don't know, man. It's like when, when you have somebody going on and on about like, I made blood out of food products or I made foamy green stuff out of the, you know, there's to a 14 year old. You're like, I see it with my own child as a matter of fact, where she like, she just sees a simple special effect done. And she's like, let's do that. Yeah. Um, oh. and, I, I, and I've been chasing the high of this book actually, since I, since I read it, like <laughs> Lloyd has released, look, I'm doing prop comedy tonight. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Lloyd has released like five others or four others at least. Make Your Own Damn Movie is probably the best one of these. In fact, I think it's probably better than um, All I Need to Know About Filmmaking if you're looking for like a cool trauma. Um, I remember I I, <laughs> I used to scoop ice cream for uh, like during the summer and this always came with me. I was just constantly reading it. This book by Lloyd Kaufman, All I Need to Know About Filmmaking, I Learned from the Toxic Avenger. This one also inspired me, but it was also very funny, even self-deprecating at times. So, yeah, it's been delayed for a while. We know that. But he has said now on more than one occasion that he began writing this book 20 years ago. So hmm. pre-AVGN, he started writing his own autobiography, which is also very James. Yeah, it's um, completely. And yeah, <laughs> he's been shopping around for three years. So I think it's been basically done for three years. So. In fact, I started writing this 20 years ago. Uh, the first drafts were on floppy disks. <laughs> I wrote this stuff down while it was still fresh in my mind. I guess so. Yeah, it just could it have been copy a copy edited for three years. There's there's no like st style standards or anything. It, it, like suddenly there'll be like caps to emphasize something, but then other times, not, you know, it's, it just needs a little, just needs, a little polish. Needs some love. <laughs> needs, needs a Kindle a version that works. Oh, and then if, as far as the the neurodivergent stuff. He, um, he said that they diagnosed him again. So let's say that he's seven or, or eight or something. So it's like 1988. So I was born in 86. Um, they diagnosed him with anxiety and ADD. Yeah. And like, look, like not to be this guy, but yeah, they didn't really know what autism, I mean, what was the first depiction of autism? Probably rain man. Right. Probably. And I, yeah, I'm not even sure they knew what that was. No. And, and, and it came with this kind of promise of like, oh, but you'll have gifts. <laughs> you know, you'll, have, <laughs> you'll, you'll be great. You'll, you'll be able to count cards and stuff. <laughs> so they didn't really know what the hell it was. I, I often wonder, I, I'm, I wonder if you feel the same way. Like it, had I not found that like filmmaking thing that I, I just plugged into, I just tuned into at a young age, like what would have come of me? Yeah, probably depression. 
<laughs> honestly. Maybe, you know, like it's like, like, well, what keeps you away from feeling lonely, purposeless, depressed? Yeah, you know? I, I know it's it definitely I think I would just spiral into self-loathing and depression, probably. Like if some if 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 the heavens opened and they took artistic expression away from you, you're like, sorry, oh. EJ. Yeah, I'd be that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's it. <laughs> like find purpose elsewhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you, you I could, probably could, but it's like that's the main thing for me, so. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm always thinking about it. So I look forward to it. It 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 looks like it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for for J- James to like engage in his biminess, you know, like cuz I, I think even appearing on camera and talking about some of the things he wants to talk about, there might be a little bit of reticence, a little bit of reluctance, embarrassment of like, are they going to go for this dr- <laughs> dragon and dream bullshit? <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but the book, the book is like full license. We're like, look, if you bought the book, you're, you either hate me and, and want to hear Frankie <laughs> talk about me or, or you, uh, you're, you're so into me that like, you'll allow, you'll indulge me. You'll allow me to, but he, he does, you know, for a guy who's, who's pretty passive, pretty humble, whatever, you know, a little bit like all shucks. There, there is a little bit of an ego self aggrandizing thing. I think he struggles yeah. with that. He doesn't talk about that much. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, like, he, yeah. like, like he, he says repeatedly and in the video, he's like, I hope this inspire. I hope that my story is inspirational or, or like he said it in the, you know, in the movie in particular, it feels like it's like 10 minutes of like, this is just how big of a celebrity AVGN is, you know? And how many lives it's touched and changed. That's one of my favorite memes is the, uh, this video saved my life, uh, thing. (laughs) (laughs) But will he address the duck walk? I think uh, probably not. Probably not. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.